Welcome back. My name is Monica. This is the second uh, clip of a re-recording for the pre-assignment in our basic hypnosis training program. Um, the questions I gave you before I asked you to pause or take a break or maybe you took pauses were with regard to journaling. What do you know about hypnosis? What is your purpose in taking a basic hypnosis class? And what do you hope to achieve? How will you know you have achieved it? Um, I'm hoping that you will all learn so much about hypnosis that you can easily pass the test. The first thing to know about hypnosis is it is a natural state. And anything that makes a connection between your conscious and your unconscious minds is hypnosis. We will be looking at chapters 1, 2, 3, and 7. They are required reading along with the journaling. Um, in the syllabus, they list as chapters 101, what is hypnosis? Chapter 102, the background of hypnosis. Chapter 103, the signs of hypnosis. I want you to know these things. Uh, chapter 107, the formulating of suggestions. I'll be asking you to do all of these things. Uh, the signs of hypnosis, recognizing them. They are on the back of the intake form. And so in the back of your book, uh, chapter nine, 119 is independent study. I've printed out separate ones called intake forms. I'll make sure IMDHA has these available on their website so you can download anytime you like. It's a simple intake. And on the back of it are the list of things that I'm expecting for you to experience or discover. The column on the right-hand side for me, left-hand side for you, are problems. Uh, Observed signs of hypnosis, such as the body taking a comfortable or easy position, eyes turning up or converging, closed eyes, concentration, you can see it about the face, body warmth, you can feel that if you're touching the person holding their hand or having a hand on the back of the neck, a fluttering of the eyelids, increased lacrimation, the whites of the eyes getting red or pinkish, the eyeballs going up into the head, the rolling back, the flattening of the facial expression, staring, the absence of blinking, almost complete immobility, increased pallor of the skin, waxiness or increased oily sheen, slowing of the breathing, lack of movement of any part of the body, lashes fluttering, and rapid eye movement, which is the REM pattern seen beneath the lids. Those are the things that as hypnotists, we watch for subjectively a person may experience a sensation of tingling in their hands or their feet or all over the person may experience a pleasant floating or even a heaviness a sensation of warmth or of a cool breeze a feeling of getting longer or shorter a feeling of going in or out, a sensation of fading in and out, like an old time radio driving through the mountain, a loss of body awareness or a heightened body awareness. There's sometimes an emotionalized desire to follow the suggestions of the hypnotist. There may be a sensation of moving or turning or going somewhere Increased lacrimation, tearing, moisture in the eyes, time distortion, energy surges. There may be a disinclination to move, speak, think, or act. There may be catalepsy or a sense of detachment. A person may describe dreams, fantasies, and or illusions. The person may have positive hallucinations, seeing something that isn't really there or negative hallucinations, not seeing what is there. There may be inner visuals with color and or movement. There is often a recognition of trance, which is very difficult to describe, but clearly felt. There may be full or partial amnesia, anesthesia, glove or hold. There is certainly an ability to open the eyes without affecting the level of relaxation. In fact, the opening and closing of the eyes can be used for deepening a state of relaxation. And the most important part of this particular training model is the focus on relaxation 
and an awareness of relaxation or tension. So in your journal, if you would, draw a circle and write in there what you're here for, or write along the edges what you're here for. For example, I am here to teach and share with you my great love of hypnosis. I am here to share with you all the competence of all the different educators that I have ever had. It is my intention to, to transmit to you through my body language, through my words, through my presence, a bounded and unbounded environment in which you can learn more about yourself and the powers of your mind. Hypnosis is for healthy people seeking to improve some aspect of their life. So in all these things that I am here to do with you today, training you to be highly successful colleagues of mine, very competent master hypnotists, I would like you to find a word or a phrase to describe your intention for being here today. For example, we could say that a key word for me is Monica. That represents who I am, who I'm born to, who my siblings are, what instruments I play, what passions I have. There are so many facets of this being called Monica. So Monica is a key word for me, just like your name is a key word for you. And anytime you see me tap my chest, move my hair, tug my ear, uh, motion to you, I'm talking to you now, your conscious and your unconscious mind, then when I tap my chest, the same thing. I'm talking from my innermost mind to your innermost mind. I am a spiritual mindist. I believe there is a divine inflowing spark that guides us in all that we do. I believe that we are here together doing the study for a greater purpose than what you and I will articulate as our purposes and that by creating this bounded and unbounded environment, we can bear witness to that marvelous unfolding. Today, all the things I want to share with you from me and my heart are summarized in the words, relax now. That means I am going to relax and I am going to enjoy teaching you hypnosis. So I'd like you to take your focus of intent, draft out a paragraph, or a phrase, and then find a keyword and put it right in the middle of your circle. I have relax now is mine. And then around it, on the outside, I've written down things that will interfere with my getting there. Let's listen at throw again. You tend to hit, we tend to hit that at which we aim. I'd like you to notch the bow of your mind. I'd like you to load it with the thoughts that you prefer, and I'd like to absorb and observe you, bear witness to the successes in the, your own unfolding. Now, what kind of things did I write down that would interfere with my being able to teach you? I wrote down, someone walks in. Yeah, someone annoying could walk in and bother me. How about money? Someone comes and offers me money. I might get distracted with that. Um, and I get sick. Oh, let's hope that doesn't happen, right? Um, uh, I could hear some really loud sounds that would prevent us from getting a good recording. I could have, and those were the things I wrote the first day when I started, but I added to it because normally I could find out all kinds of things that could interfere with my getting my focus on what I want, which is to relax now and share with you hypnosis. I also had software glitches, computer glitches, temperature issues because we're in Florida. Yes, there's all kinds of things that can prevent us from achieving our goals. The most important thing that prevents us from achieving our goals is our own lack of focus. So today, what are you here for? Take the time. Fill out your focus of intent. And while you're filling out your focus of intent, I'm going to talk to your body. You might find it easier to put your feet flat on the floor if you've already filled out your focus of intent and you're ready to just relax, put your hands on your thighs or lay down comfortably, loosen or remove any article of clothing that may restrict or confine you, and then take a good deep breath. Perhaps you'd like to put your eyes on a spot. I picked one. 
there at the edge of the room where the wall and ceiling come together and you'll notice my body is starting to show the signs of hypnosis. If you know what to look for, you'll see it. There's the deepening of the breath. Let me tell you what I'm doing while I'm doing this. I deepen myself with deeper breathing. I blink a few times. I breathe in relaxation. My eyes are wanting to close now. There they are. They've closed down to just the neck. The neck's starting to roll. Yes, the neck muscles are the first ones to get tight. They're losing control over. Oh, no. The baby's lifting their head. Oh, yeah. He's flipping from side to side. And then she's been falling, running. It all starts with neck control. So you may see me put my hand on the back of someone's neck as I'm talking to them doing hypnosis because I am using that touch to assess body temperature and the tension that's going on in the neck muscles. It feels like my neck has wobbled down a bit. And I'm shifting a little bit more with my breath. Now I'm going to open my eyes. I'm going to look at the camera. And I'm going to talk to you and do what's called the progressive relaxation. You can just go back deeper into relaxation for the next oh, few minutes while I talk to your body. Totally relax. Ball of the feet, arch of the feet, heels turn loose and limp and lazy. Ankles, shins, and calves relaxing. Shins, calves, knees, thighs, buttocks, and pelvic organs turn loose and limp and good. Small of the back, middle of the back, upper back relaxing. Chest relaxing, belly relaxing, and good. Breathing in relaxation. Breathing out tension and listening to the sound of your breathing. The in-breath sounds like so is the out-breath sounds like calm. You're breathing in life. You're breathing out waste and all background sounds of footsteps and doors opening and closing reassure you also in the outside world you're safe to go deeper into the knowing. Deeper into understanding what hypnosis means to you and what it means to let yourself go into a waking place between your conscious and your unconscious mind. Yeah, I'm talking to you now. It's time to let your big you come out to play. You that inside mind and you that outside mind, the inside mind that does reflection, understanding, and memorization, and you the outside mind, the peanut brain, the logic that does judging and rational thought and comparisons. Breathing deep and easy. I'm talking to you now. It's time to relax. Hands, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, shoulders. If you're still writing, you notice writing has an automatic function to it. Maybe you had to learn it once a long time ago, and if you're not writing, you'll notice that your breathing has an automatic process to it. It goes like this. You breathe in, and you breathe out. And the in-breath sounds like so sad, the out-breath sounds like calm. Maybe you've been snorkeling, or been running, or heard yourself breathing in the shower, or making love, and you know it has a very special sound. The in-breath sounds like so or sa, the out-breath sounds like calm, hands, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, and shoulders relax the more with every breath, the rise and the falling of your ribcage gives you a beautiful massage and good, breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide, work through the body now. Throat and neck relaxing. If the teeth are touching, allow them to part. Allow all the jaw muscles to relax. Loose and limp and good. Ears relaxing. Scalp muscles relaxing. Deep inside, there's a quiet place. Deep inside, there's a part that knows everything about you. And it knows that. It knows, and it knows why you're here. And it knows why you tell yourself you're here. And it knows why you're going to tell me and your partner why you're here. And it knows what you're really here for. So trust yourself completely. And find yourself, very curiously, answering the first thing that comes to mind and surprising and delighting yourself. Particularly surprising and delighting yourself when you notice just very vaguely in the background that I'm pushing the hair out of my eyes. Or I'm <coughs> clearing my throat, or I'm tapping my chest, or I'm indicating for you, or I'm tugging my ear, or any of the many things that I will indicate to you are indicators to you so that you can become aware of how the suggestion to become more aware is something expanding your mind. That you're more aware of yourself and the world around you and here. 
and exhaling down a moment. I'm going to count from five to one, and as I count from five to one, bring yourself all the way back to full waking state. Even if your eyes are still open and you're still writing, go ahead and bring yourself back to full waking state. Most people find that after a progressive relaxation, they are hypnoidal for anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes, meaning wide open for new suggestions. Open for the suggestions that are beneficial and positive. So now's a great time to write down. Number five, coming all the way back to full waking state. Number four, with a wonderful feeling of well-being. Number three, calmly, easily, gently, beautifully. Number two, remembering to forget the things you don't need to remember. Number one, eyes open. Take a good deep breath. Reach out and stretch. Feeling wonderfully good all over and good. And excellent. Now, take about 10 minutes and write in your journal what you're really here for. Pull out from chapter 119, the first of your intakes. Make it for you. On the back of it, you will notice a whole list of subjective things. You might want to fill that out first while your memory is fresh, and then fill out the front part so that your unconscious mind can show you what your response is to suggestion of relaxation. Thank you, and we will be back shortly with the next part of your pre-assignment.